everyone, it's April with Well Life Yoga and Health. Today I'm going to be going through a more intermediate to advanced posture called King Pigeon Pose. So hopefully you are fairly warmed up. This will only be the transitions into King Pigeon. So if you need a good warm up, so I will go ahead and list a good warm up video in the description below if you want to actually do that one before you come back to this one or if you're already pretty advanced and live in a more open body then you might be fine just doing this one standalone. All right we're going to start as we do with all our other flows with a short meditation and we will be covering the solar plexus chakra which is the third chakra from the root of the spine right here it is also known as manipura or city of jewels it is our place of our inner power of our confidence our self-esteem our ego whether it's you know in balance or out of balance it's the seat of our ego um, and it's right in the middle of our being so we'll go ahead and place the hands on the knees or in the lap, eyes dialed down. Breathe into the belly and let it out. Work on relaxing the shoulders away from the ears. And softening the breath. Maybe you can relax the face a little more. Maybe that tiny little area between your eyebrows that scrunches up when you're frustrated. Try to smooth that out now. The solar plexus chakra is represented by the color yellow. Sun, our place of power, our place of light. And maybe if you feel called to, you can place the hands right about where your lower ribs are, where your diaphragm is, where your stomach, your actual stomach is. The affirmation today is, I attract wonderful things into my life. I attract wonderful things into my life. Holding that affirmation in your mind. I attract wonderful things into my life. Maybe you lift one corner of the mouth, maybe you lift the other, and smile. Believe that to be true. Fill it with every ounce of your being. Take one more breath. Open the mouth, let it out. Slowly opening the eyes. If you had your hands on your belly, you can release them. And we'll go ahead and come into our tabletop position, finding our hands underneath our shoulders and our knees directly under our hips. Fingers are always wide, like you're high-fiving that mat. Look forward. Right foot comes in between the hands, finding your low lunge. Remember, knee over ankle. 
And if you have room to walk that knee back, walk the back knee back. We'll inhale as we lift the arms up to the sky. And then start to open the heart, reaching the arms back as the gaze goes up. Bend in that front knee a little more. Pull the right hip crease slightly back, squaring those hips. So there are two straight lines towards the front of the mat. Maybe a little more. Three. And come back down, frame the foot with the hands. Plant the left hand about where the foot is, but maybe a little forward of it. And then we'll reach the right arm back parallel towards the back of the mat. Start to bend in that back knee, reach for the foot. Keep that right knee squeezed into the body. And if you have a little bit more flexibility in your hip flexors, keep that front foot turned about 30 degrees towards the right side of your mat. And maybe we lower down to the elbow, about 30 degrees with this too. Pull that foot a little closer. Shoulders stacking over shoulder. So from the foot to the shoulder, to the elbow in the front, we're in one straight line. One more breath. And then slowly let go of the foot. No slingshotting here. Frame the foot with your hands. Step it back. Find a plank pose. Go through a vinyasa flow. Press off the toes. Lower down through chaturanga or to the belly. Inhale. Upward facing dog. Exhale. Downward facing dog. Take one full breath here. And then slowly lower down to the knees. Untuck the toes. Coming into this half kneeling position. Hands come to the lower back. Press the hips forward. Finding a camel variation. Squeeze the elbows into the body. And if you have camel, we can go ahead and slowly lower the left hand to the left foot. Reach the right arm up, bring it back, open the heart, and then swim it around to the right foot. Press the hips forward, lift the chest and the upper ribs towards the sky. Camel. Breathe. Maybe the head rest back if you have no neck issues. Squeeze a little bit to the glutes and lift the chest towards the sky. And to come out, we bring the left hand back to the lower back. Right hand and sit the hips back. <sighs> Onto the heels, rock side to side. A lot of back bending going on. All right, we'll do the other side with the low lunge. Hands come down, tabletop position. Left foot comes in between the hands. Find your low lunge. So, this little runner's type position, and then we'll inhale, arms come up. Breathe here. Pull that left hip crease back slightly so you'll get a little more stretch in that right hip as you do that. Breathe. At the same time as you're reaching towards the sky, pull the shoulders back down. So we're reaching and pulling at the same time. Go ahead and lower the right hand a little bit more in front of the foot off to the side. Left arm swims around as we reach parallel to the back of our foot. Perhaps we start to bend, reach for the foot, pull it in. And if this foot wants to fall out, try to pull it in using those inner thigh muscles. And again, if you came down to your elbow on this side, 
toes pointing about 30 degrees towards the top of the mat, and then elbow comes down about 30. Same idea here. Stacking bone over bone from elbow to shoulder to foot. Find your breath here. This can be a very intense pose depending on how open you are with your hips. And if you want to come onto an intermediate level, you might come instead of to the elbow, come to the elbow on top of a block. One more breath and then slowly release that back foot. Plant the palms, frame the foot, step it back into your tabletop position, and then meet in downward facing dog. Take one more breath here. Inhale and let it go. Go ahead and reach the right leg high. Knee comes towards the right elbow. Lower it down, cross the foot across the mat, and find your pigeon. So back foot sliding back until you get the hip pretty low. If you don't have the hip mostly low, this might not be a position that you're gonna be ready for with the king pigeon. So maybe we just go to this point in pigeon pose if we need that support on our right hip. Finding an upright pigeon, so hands are next to the hips. Again, if you need props, place some blocks here if you can't reach the ground. And really squaring those hips. So not leaning over here, but we're leaning more towards the left so that we can square those hips. So you're already feeling a back bend here. We'll lift our arms up to the sky. Open the heart. Breathe. Maybe Kelly Mudra. And then hands come back to the sides. Take the right hand next to the ankle. Reach back like we did with that twisted monkey. And we'll go ahead and bend the knee, reach for the inside of the foot this time. Maybe we flip the grip so the fingertips are towards the ankle and the wrist towards the toes. You can press down if you have this opening, otherwise you can stay here. So find what level you're at. Never force this pose. It can be very dangerous for the hip flexors. One more breath. And then another pose that is an intermediate between king pigeon and having a nice little quad stretch is to hook your elbow around. So see how I had my hand here? I press down, I slide till I hook my elbow, and then my toes, maybe they flex to hold it. Hand can come up, look forward, and then perhaps you bring the right arm up Bring it over behind the head and bind the hands, opening the chest towards the front. This does require core and maybe flex that front foot to keep yourself anchored. One more breath. Hand comes back down to the right. Release the foot until you grab it here. If you need to take a break, feel free to pause the video. Otherwise, we're gonna turn our toes out. See how I'm flexing them outward? And then we're going to reach for the side of the big toe. So you wanna hook around your big toe, open hand. So if you were this way, you would swim it around, bring it underneath, and then start to back bend here. See how I'm bending back and then swim the elbow up and around, holding that foot and then face forward foot comes towards the head or just holding it. Right arm can come up, walk the hand towards the other and grab, breathe. And maybe we release. 
It's not a pose you can hold for a very long time unless you're very open in your body. Slowly release that foot, plant the palms, walk that back knee in, step it back, take a short little child's pose. All right, looking forward, go ahead and come back into your downward facing dog. Left leg goes up, three-legged dog. Knee to the chest, over to the elbow, slide it down, foot goes across. Find your pigeon, sliding that back foot until you find your upright pigeon. Hands next to the hips. Breathe here. Square hips. Remember, if this is where your limit is and you're not all the way to the ground, let's go ahead and stay here. Inhale, arms go up. Exhale, maybe Kali Mudra. Reaching back. And then hands lower down. Left hand comes in front of the left ankle now. Reach the right hand back parallel. And then leaning towards that right hip, bend in that right knee. Reach for the inside of the foot. Perhaps we flip the grip, press down on the foot. Find your variation here. Breathe. and then slowly release the foot a little bit. We're gonna slide into that mermaid. So press the foot back, hook the elbow around, looking forward, left arm goes up. Maybe we bind the hands, open that chest, engage the core, flex the front foot. One more breath and then slowly release until we're right here with our foot. Turn the foot out, so toes out. Or reach for the underneath of the foot and the big toe. So again, that left hand can come over towards your ankle. Then back bend, reach the elbow up and open, foot to the head towards the head. Perhaps we take this front arm. And right here, I don't have my toes, but that's okay. One more breath. And then slowly release. Don't let it sing shut. Hands come back. To the mat, bring the knees together, open the feet, move the flesh of the calf out of the way, sit down between the heels. So heels are on each side of the body. Hands can come to the heart, hero pose. Perhaps this is a little too intense, you can have a block underneath or a blanket underneath your glutes. Breathe, relieving any lower back stress. One more breath. And then slowly come forward, swing the legs around. Feet go as wide as your yoga mat. And then we'll let the knees windshield wiper from side to side, relieving any lower back tension. The last pose was to neutralize, and this one is to relieve.
All right, coming to sit in our easy pose. Thank you all so very much for sharing your time with me and for practicing with me. I hope that you are either on your way to King Pigeon or you are already there and you're just practicing. So if this is really hard for you, you can always use straps. I did not show those in this tutorial, but you can always use straps. If you would like a tutorial like that, please leave a comment down below and I will gladly make a tutorial where I show how to use straps because that's how I actually got into it before I got the full expression because it can take a while to get that elbow down to come up, especially if you're very tight in this area here, okay? So other than that, we'll go ahead and bring our hands to our heart and we'll close out with three ohms. Thank you so very much for attending and watching and supporting my channel. We'll go ahead and inhale before we ohm. Thank you all so very much. And as always, I'm open to hearing feedback. Please like and subscribe and share this with anybody you think might be interested in it, especially if they're working on this pose. Otherwise, make sure that you hit the bell so that you can be alerted every time I release a new video. Thank you so very much. I'll see you later. Peace out.